Yeah, yeah. Well, crazy times are ahead. Me and Ghetto C have reached the uh, sort of trailhead here at Island Lake. The gate is still closed to the campground, so we'll have to walk that last little bit. But we're going to be cramponing and whatnot up to the Cloverleaf Lakes Basin. And uh, we're going to catch some giant cutthroat trout, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a fantastic adventure. So join us. Highway 212 up to the Beartooth is a crazy road, but it was once dubbed by Charles Kuralt as one of the most scenic drives in the world, and it's easy to see why. At over 10,000 feet, large walls of snow from the winter still remain well into spring. <laughs> yeah, get some water for the trail. Yeah, yeah! Before long, we encounter our first challenge. Yeah, Ghetto! Alright, this is our first kind of little glacier-esque. We've encountered a little snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah! Time for a little equipment reconfiguring and take a little break. We're starting to enter the land of uh, more snow. And uh, look, even that lake over there is partially frozen still, so... Yeah, right now we're about uh, 9,400 feet in climbing, so... Is it cold? <laughs> yeah. So, we're approaching Becker Lake, we're almost there, and it looks like we're starting to get some of the snow. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we're at like 9,420 right now. So, we're kind of way up here, another 800 feet or so. All right, rock on, man. Whoa. They got an ice auger? <laughs> Becker Lake says we might have something else in store. Wow. So we're going to see what the head of the lake looks like. Crazy. All right. There goes Daniel glissading down the little ice hill. Didn't get very far, but it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah! I tell you what, this is some absolutely surreal trekking. And this is only Becker Lake. There's just, the Cloverleaf Lakes are going to be frozen over. There's open water here at the head of the lake. We're going to go camp up there and fish it. And we can day hike up to Albino tomorrow and see if there's any open water up there. Wow, that's some snow, man. Crazy. So because the uh, snow is going to get a little steep over there here after our lunch break, and it's pretty much a lot of snow from here on out, we're going to go ahead and put on the crampons. Yeah, we, we're uh, testing out the Camp USA stalkers here. So, uh, and it'll help us climb over that steep stuff. So, let's do it. Yeah. So we've reached the head of the lake, and uh, there's some open water here where the inlet creek comes in. So we're going to fish it. Alright, so here is a great tip. Never ever settle for the first campsite because we were out there on the point but we went and scouted around and we found this nice dry spot. It's got a little ring in the trees up there and dry ground and uh, on up to Albino Lake. So I'm going to pitch my bivy sack right here so I'm going to get it set up and then we're going to scout around. Alright, so here's the thing. We uh, pitched our camp and got some day packs and we're gonna hike up over that pass to Albino Lake look at it it's all full of snow so we put on the crampons we're ready to do this and uh, we're gonna go up there and see if we can catch some cuts all right so now we got to use our crampons and go up this crazy pass so up to Albino Lake awesome Almost to Albino Lake. Yeah, yeah, well we made it as far as Albino Lake. We could keep going, but the lakes are going to be frozen anyway, so why bother? We'll head back down to Becker and work the hole there by the inlet and see if we can catch some fish. But check that out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, come with me as I'm going to take my ice axe and glissade down this slope. So I'm going to slide down that. It's going to be crazy. 
How's that tank rage in, dog? Uh, that's uh, lovely. It's excellent vitamin water. I highly recommend it. The uh, nice. Power C with dragon fruit. Yeah, <laughs> with the uh, number seven in it. Yeah. Number seven in yeah, it. Yeah, dog. Hey. All right. I've, trout rising out there. Yeah, I've rigged up my fly rod here with a woolly bugger, and there are trout rising behind this little ice flow here, so I'm going to get up over there and give it a go after another wee nip of the frog. All right, I just caught about an 8 or 10 inch brook trout out of there on the woolly booger, and now Chris is giving it a try. So, while he does that, we got two things I wanted to kind of review. One, the uh, Camp USA Stalker Crampons, made in Italy. Um, 99 bucks at REI. They were pretty awesome. They um, really help with the grip a lot. You know, the downside is it feels like a five, -time, a five pound weight, you know, tied to your foot, but um, it really helped with the slipping and the heavier snow further up from here. And the other thing is, you may have noticed these pants I'm wearing. You might think, hey, man, those look like Bear Grylls. They are Bear Grylls pants. My wife got them for me for a gag gift, but as it turns out, they're actually pretty all right. They're uh, called Crag Hoppers, and I guess she had to call the store, like in Manchester or something, to get them. But uh, I like the pockets. They're really nice. It's got a nice material. They're not zip-offs, but they do have these uh, stretch panels, and they actually do stretch. And so, you know, I did a lot of glissading, just like Bear would. Of course, he would build a raft. Yeah, that's the, always the way to get out of somewhere is to build a rack. But anyway, the pants themselves are pretty good. They got a little dry bag pocket in here. So you can um, roll like a camera or a phone or something up in the dry bag, and it goes in the pocket. And it stays in there, and it'll stay completely dry. So it's pretty awesome. So check them out, you know. Order them from jolly old England, I say. And then uh, Chris, still fishing. Yeah, yeah. Time for some more Lafroig. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so after fishing it and catching, uh, I caught about four, you know, they weren't giant brook trout, but uh, they were little fighters, it was good times on the woolly bugger. So now we've come over to our little lounge area here in camp, and you know, we're going to have some Lafroig and um, cook up some dinner, so I'm boiling some water. Now you can see this is another good tip, uh, a handy thing to bring is a thing of tinfoil like that, because you can use it for a windscreen, uh, to keep stuff warm, you know, all, all kinds of uses. As the windscreen there, it works great on the stove, man, and uh, good time. So, about 20 minutes, we'll be eating dinner. Cost Plus World Market is great for stuff like this little bag of um, olives. Check it out, man. There's some green olives in there. You know, it's great for a happy hour type situation like this, sitting here while you're waiting for your dinner to cook. They got little sausages and shrink wrap packages and stuff, too, and little cheeses, man. It's uh, good, good stuff, man. Really boosts the morale. And another thing the tinfoil is good for if you're cooking a homemade dehydrated meal like me, this is the Rat Dog Backcountry Bistro, Pasu Genovese. And uh, you can use the tinfoil to wrap this up while this is kind of rehydrating with the hot water in there. And so it works really awesome. And then finally, you can use the tinfoil like an oven mitt, you know, to hold your hot thing of food. And there it is, the uh, Rat Dog Backcountry Bistro. Angel hair pasta with a, like a pesto situation. It's very tasty. Yeah, 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 sipping on gin and juice. Look at the um, skyline here. It's crazy. It's starting to get dark, and it's starting to cool off a little bit, but it's not that cold. But the lake, of course, is still kind of semi-frozen, so we're going to drop down to Muffin, Mutt and Jeff tomorrow. But, uh, good to yeah. All right, so it's breakfast time now, and... After a good night of sleep, we're just having some crazy Chinese tea from Fujian province and some shortbreads. And uh, we're going to move down to the uh, next lowest lakes down there where there was some good looking fishable water and better campsites with wood and stuff. So we're going to head down there today and fish it. Wow, surreal, homie. Yoo-hoo! And pawn it. Yeah, it looks like our snow trekking is over. 
We've made it back down to Mutton Jeff Lake, so we're going to head down there and find a campsite and fish it. All right, so we found our next camp spot. It's uh, got some structures and it's got the benefit of a thing of firewood over here for us, so we'll probably set up our stuff in this area and we'll probably bivy under that tree or over under that tree. We're just going to bivy up over there and yeah, and then we can set up our stuff. They're setting up our camp back there now. It's time to go fishing. So we're going to head out there and try to catch some brook trout. All right, it took some effort to get to a point where we were close to a drop-off, but we've got our first brook trout at a Mutton Jeff Lakes. So, little guy, but hey, good times. Damn good times. So I caught about half a dozen little trout over there beyond that point, and then I came back and told Ghetto about my success, and now he's got to try to get over there and get some. All right, so check it out. There you can see my bivy on the other side of the crazy little streams and stuff yeah and right over here we're cooking our dinner so good times yeah so this will give you a little idea of our uh, kitchen setup get OC here yeah he's gonna go with uh, some chicken teriyaki yeah, yeah. teriyaki chi and uh... I backed up against this little rock um, funnel situation here for a uh, little wind shieldage for the stove and some green pea curry from Rat Dog Backcountry Bistro. Tasty. It is so tasty. Wow. It was a pretty comfy night. I was totally warm in the bivy. It was uh, toasty. So, good times, have a good night's sleep, and, um, you know, get a little something to eat, and maybe hike out of here. Good times. All right, boiling up some water for some tea. And, uh, you know, tea is kind of a personal choice. Everybody has their own likes. I like the Ti Guan Yin. It's from Fujian Province in China. It's like an oolong tea with a little bit of a jasmine flavoring, but also kind of, God, it tastes almost like butter. And uh, this particular little bit is uh, from my homie back in Southern California, Zijian Wu, sent me this tea, and uh, I'm going to drink it up here in the wilderness. It's good stuff. It's got a little bit of caffeine in it, which helps in the morning. It's on top of that rock. The Mormon. He's checking us out like maybe we're going to be a food source, you know. So first, it's time for packing up. some more snow trekking. Towards the end of our long hike out, we finally reach Night Lake. And then, Island Lake. And since it was so close, I was able to just power through the creek because I got dry crocs in the car. And there it is. Woohoo! Yeah, y'all! Yeah. <laughs>